People won't join network marketing because they don't think they what? Know anybody. It's not about a natural resource. It's about a skill. People think, well, if, if you know a lot of people and if you're influential, well, then network marketing is yours. But if you don't know a lot of people and you're not influential, you can't succeed. This is a skill. It's not a natural resource. It's a skill. Learning how to find prospects. So here's what posers do. They make a mental list. They think of some people. 80% plus start here. They make a mental list. Yeah, yeah, I know I should write it down, but I got it. It's right here. It's right here. I got it. <laughs> Everything I need is right here. You're not the boss of me. Back off. <laughs> Amateurs make a written list. Amateurs make a written list and they immediately start to drain the list. And as the list drains, their anxiety grows. That's what amateurs do. They go through the list and their anxiety goes, <gasps> I'm going to run out. And when I run out, I'm done. It's over for me. Hmm. Guess I just didn't know enough people. Seven billion on the planet, but <laughs> guess I just didn't know enough. That Here's what professionals do. They create what I call an active candidate list. It's not a list that they build and they start to drain. And a lot of people have big problems with network marketing because of warm market. Oh, I don't want to talk to my friends. I don't want to talk to my family. Code word, I've done this before and they're not going to accept me. Right? Warm market is not where we end up, it's where we start. We start, we practice with them, and we got some friendly faces, and we have something we believe in, a product or service or opportunity we believe in, we share it with them. If we do it professionally, we're going to get one result. If we do it as amateurs, we're going to get another result. Almost everybody does it as posers, not even amateurs, with no skill, and they don't get that good a result. And once they warm out, run out of warm market, they're done, it's over. Professionals create an active candidate list. So here's some steps to going pro. Number one, make a comprehensive list. Everybody goes on your list. Every single person goes on your list. Empty your mind on paper. They go find every list they can possibly find. Old wedding lists and party lists and Christmas card lists and everywhere they can find and they add them to the list. All organizations that they've ever been a part of, they think about those people and they add them to the list. This list becomes a big list. People used to have the excuse to say, I don't know anybody. And then you go look at Facebook and they have 800 friends. Stop it. You know, it's so fun to be able to bust that illusion. Pull all, every single contact out of your cell phone and make it, add it to the list. Back in the day, if somebody created a list of 200 people, that was a big deal. Now every one of your kids has a list of 200 on their cell phone. Go into your email, pull all the people that you know in your email, add them to your list. And go to social media. And don't be a poser or an amateur, but add the people that you actually have and some interaction with to your list. People you'd say, they're, they're a friend. They're not just somebody that I don't know because I really, really wanted to max out my friend list at 5,000, so I started adding everybody. So social media, add those people to your list. Do not prospect them there. Just don't do it. We'll talk about how we invite people in the next step. But add them to your list. Next, after you've made your comprehensive list, this is just step one. If this was taught in a college course and you were going to be graded by how many people you had on your list 
and you really needed the grade, how many people could you have on your list? I mean, come on. We play these little funny mental games. If I gave you $1,000 for every person you put on the list, how many people you could put on the list? I mean, all this stuff just to get you to do what you should do because you're acting like you're in sixth grade and not in the real world. I mean, come on. What the professionals do is they develop the discipline of adding two people every day. At least two people to their list every day. Two people a day. Two a day, two a day, two a day. And you're already meeting people that could go on your list. Everybody goes on your list. One of the greatest disciplines, Harvey McKay, the author of Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive, he's a good friend of mine. I've done a couple interviews with Harvey. He's the most networked guy I know. He's unbelievable. I'm going to give you a couple secrets of his networking style. One is his dad sat him down at age 19 and said, Harvey, today from, from now until the, the day you die, every person you meet, you're going to get their contact information, you're going to make a little note about them, and you're going to find a creative way to stay in touch. Every person you meet forever. Today his list is about, and these are just organic lists, not Facebook friends. 14,000 people he has contact information from. 14,000. Now think about, here's one of the things where I have to forgive myself. Because I've been bad at this my whole career. I'm terrible. If I would have started at age 23, with how many hundreds of thousands of people I've met, people who've moved on, their company flew up, different something happened, but if I would have stayed in touch, I would, the opportunities would be, I'd be earning millions a month. Just from the relationships. Just with a creative way of staying in touch. Over the course of 25 years. Here's the good news, you can start right now. You know, if you start right now, this is a core skill, what you have to do is raise your awareness and pay attention. That turns into 600 people a year, 3,000 people in five years. Just two a day. But is it work? Yes. Staying in touch in a creative way, in a friendly way, not necessarily recruiting them every time you talk to them. Is that creative? Yes. And I'll tell you the other thing that Harvey does. He is a true networker in the sense that he's a true friend. You know what Harvey does, tries to do, because he learned, he, he, I don't know if he learned this, but he shares this with his buddy Lou Holtz, his best friend. If you meet Lou Holtz or if you, you meet Harvey McKay, their entire thought process is what can I do for you? How can I help? I've got some influence. I got this. I got that. Can I help you? So when we were struggling with some immigration issues with our son, who we finally got approval on, um, called Harvey and said, Harvey, would you help? Har uh, just as, you know, is there anything you can do? Harvey went to work. Harvey called senators. He got government officials on the phone. He called the biggest fundraisers in the state and said, I need your influence. Now that process wasn't actually even successful because there were some laws involved with the, the way everything happened. But I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. If Harvey wants something from me, he's got it. Done. Wants me to promote his book? Promoted. Consider it done. He's my friend, man. So if you look for ways that you can contribute to other people's lives instead of just recruiting them all the time on your list, you will become one of the most influential people in the world. People will not only just be asking, but they're looking for opportunities to give. And Harvey does this, and he never keeps score. He never in his mind says, well, you know, you didn't really pay me back for last time. Never. Never keeps score. He just looks for opportunities to serve. Is the network on purpose? Don't hide. Get out there.
decide to become a citizen of the world. Get out there. Meet some people. Shake some hands. Say hello. One of the exercises that we did in the last two years, and I can't do this year. I wish I could. I can't do it. Here was the, here was the exercise that we did during the lunch break is we gave people a scavenger hunt form. And we had people pair up with somebody they didn't know. And the scavenger hunt form was filled with different kinds of people. You had to find a mother with seven children. You had to find somebody who owned a horse. You had to find somebody who owned a Lamborghini. You had to find somebody who uh, was a millionaire. You had to find all these 30 different things. One was an astronaut. You had to find an astronaut. And you got two hours, ready, go. And we did this down on, on the strip. Um, so you can go out in the street. People went out in the streets. They went everywhere like crazy, just finding out that if you get out there, you can just say hi to people and have fun, and it's fun. You have a good time. And we had, what, four people that had 29 and one or two people that had 30? They found an astronaut. Are you crazy me? It's like, what the heck? In two hours, could you create a game and go meet 200 people in two hours like they did? And all they did, let me tell you something, all they did is they brought their list out and said, you know, hey, I'm involved in something, we're having fun, I've got this event, I've got, uh, do you meet any of these criteria on this list? And the person said, well, yeah, I'm that one. Will you sign it to just prove that you did it, you know, did, that you were the one? Yes, okay, I'll sign it. Could you not play a game with your organization and say, you know, we're going to go out and I've got to prove that I met 100 people and I made friends with 100 people over the course of one weekend. Would you be one of my hundred? Will you put your email address and I can just stay in touch, let me let you know how I did? Hey, could you play around with this and network on purpose? Yes, the answer is yes. That exercise shocks people. The reason why I can't do it here is we're at the Green Valley Ranch and the hotel would kill me. <laughs> Down there, people could get out of the hotel. In the, when we did it at the Monte Carlo, it lasted about a half an hour before everybody said, hey, 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 out on the street, you crazy people. Because, you know, we were hitting every blackjack table, hold on, every restaurant, the whole deal. <laughs> so don't hide. Get out there. Have some fun. Join a new gym. Start a new hobby. And don't just start it and just say, hey, I'm glad to be on the bowling league. I want to share an opportunity with you in our first game. <laughs> I'm saying get out there and live a bigger life. When the time is appropriate, professionally, you can let people know. But here's what I do know. If you make friends, friends know what the other friends do without you having to pitch it. Become more fun. Become more interesting. Become a little bit more outgoing. Get out there. Be interesting. Be fun. Be that life of the party, even if you're going to be tired afterwards. So one, you're going to make a comprehensive list. Two, the second degree of separation. Three, constantly expand your list. And four, network on purpose. Network on purpose. Got it? This is a skill. And we'll know if you're serious about this skill, if by the end of this weekend, your comprehensive list has been reborn. One of the best things I would suggest everybody do at every single event, redo your list. Make a fresh list. It'll refresh your brain, looking at the old tired list. Make a new list. Think about the second degree of separation. Think about how you've expanded or what you're going to do to expand it. And I know I've got somebody who's really becoming a pro if, they, if they're adding two a day. Network on purpose. Get out there. Become interesting. Become fun.